The president of the United States must help us, as we are migrants. We go there to work and our children to study. It is all that we want. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. New York. New York. Chicago. Chicago. Migrants say the president has given them the green light to come on in. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas discussing that in what they describe as a, quote, very productive meeting with Mexican President Obrador. Senior Biden administration officials say the meeting in Mexico City lasted more than two hours, adding that Mexico agreed on the need to crack down on smuggling. Mexico's president says an agreement to reopen rail crossings was reached, but added that the fentanyl crisis was hardly discussed. All of this unfolding as a caravan of some 8,000 migrants makes its way north to the U.S. Nate Foy has the latest as sanctuary cities deal with a new surge of migrants. But first, let's bring in Auden Cabello, a citizen journalist covering the migrant caravan for more on this story and all of his insight. Auden, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Good to be with you. Auden, let's start off with this caravan. What do you know in terms of the number, the latest on the number, where they are, and who is making up this caravan? So initially, it was 8,000. Uh, the latest number is that it dropped to 7. Uh, some of those have, have been able to uh, either, they can no longer continue walking, or some of those have been um, catered to by uh, smugglers and uh, they're taking different routes. Uh, but so far, the number still uh, is around 7,000. It's made up of 24 different countries, uh, the majority from uh, Cuba, Venezuela, uh, some African and Asian uh, nations in there. And um, they're gradually moving. Um, they moved out of Tapachula in protest that they were not being granted their um, transit papers to, to travel through Mexico, make it to the U.S. border. So in, in, a, in a form of protest, uh, they came out as a caravan, walked to uh, Wixla, where once again they were denied their transit papers. So they're continuing to the uh, uh, northern part or central part of Mexico. And that's essentially where they take the trains. And uh, that's how they arrive to border towns like Piedras Negras, where I've been documenting on the Mexican side how they arrive on train and right. cross into Eagle Pass by the thousands. Auden, uh, the meeting just happened uh, yesterday between our Secretary Anthony Blinken, uh, Secretary of State, as well as the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas with Mexico's President Obrador and their officials. It looks like they're going to keep the ports of entry open. That was a sticking point. It looks like more enforcement is happening. We've seen uh, earlier today that the Mexican authorities have gone into some encampments on the Mexican side of the border and have removed uh, those encampments. But do you see anything coming from this meeting in terms of stopping the, this caravan in particular from getting on board those trains, anything from Mexico that says we're going to do anything at all that's remotely different than what they've done in the past? Well, I, I see this as, as, a, as a state of weakness for the United States. I think Mexico has the upper hand and they've been able to leverage uh, this, this situation with why, the migrants. Why do you think that? Uh, well, one, because... Um, the uh, closure of the ports of entry did, did impact Mexico economically, but now that uh, uh, Secretary Mayorkas and Blinken went to Mexico to negotiate with Mexico, they realized, AMLO did, that, that he has the upper hand and can negotiate, and that's why these ports of entry entries are now open, including the railways uh, in, in Juarez, El Paso, and Piedras Negras, Eagle Pass. So I think that's a victory for Lopez Obrador. And I think um, he, he has taken measures on the northern part of Mexico. Uh, as you mentioned, in Matamoros, they've cleared out a camp using a bulldozer. In Piedras Negras, they're flying migrants back to southern Mexico. And I think that's the initial phase of this agreement. Um, however, the bottleneck that forms in southern Mexico, like Tapachula, uh, cannot be contained by Mexico. And th that's why we're seeing these caravans come out of there. Auden, I'd like to show our viewers the numbers here. Uh, call for number two here. 75,000, uh, 35,000 migrants over the four-day Christmas break, 250,000 since December 1st. We are on track to having the highest number of border encounters ever this month, Auden. Is there anything, if you were in that meeting with the Mexican officials and Biden officials, what would you say Mexico must do to, to help us here? And it, does it fall on Mexico, really, to, to, to help stop this? 
Yeah, well, if you ask uh, Mexicans, they say it's not their responsibility. Uh, Mexico has said uh, repeatedly that they can't stop migrants as long as uh, the United States has their, their doors open. As long as they're ad admitting uh, migrants and allowing them into the country, there's very little Mexico can do. And I, and I think that's part of the bargaining that um, Blinken and Mayorkas brought to Mexico is, is th they can't implement um, Trump-era policies Otherwise, they'll alienate their base, and that's why they're they're wanting Mexico to do their bidding, and and Mexico has their their hands tied. I don't think there's much they can do, other than uh, the impact that they receive economically, and and that's why they negotiate. But other than that, uh, there's very little, very little that Mexico says is not their responsibility. On the other, on the other hand, what uh, Lopez Obrador has said is invest in root causes, that being Cuba and Venezuela instead of in Mexico, uh, essentially saying it's not my responsibility to stop uh, the migrants from coming through Mexico um, as long as you have your, your doors open and uh, the borders completely open. And um, he, he doesn't see it as being Mexico's responsibility. Yeah, and obviously after this meeting, this caravan continues to make its way north. We haven't seen anything yet by way of stopping these trains or any kind of significant border enforcement other than those encampments so far uh, that shows us that this is going to be any different than what we've seen in the past with Mexico stepping in with enforcement for a few weeks or a few months and then it's back to, to normal. Uh, Aden Cabello, thank you so much for being here and for all the reporting that you are doing. My pleasure. Thank you.